Well, what are those? We are ready, and uh, I got the new Hey Dudes on. <laughs> Come on, man. Everybody was hoping you'd wear your Crocs today. <laughs> yeah. Lots been going on here at Lake Mead. We got off the mountains, did a nice bull elk hunt. A lot of you guys might have watched that video. I got a little bit stuffed up because I was out there for six days in some really dusty stuff, and it got my sinuses messed up. So uh, we're out here, though. And you know how we do it. We just kind of roll around the lake and... uh you know, update you guys on everything we've been looking at. So this one should be interesting. A lot to look forward to. So join us for this one. In this video, we are going to be doing a Lake Mead water level update, which we haven't done in a while because we've been up in the mountains getting that meat for the winter. But uh, if you haven't seen that video, there will be a link at the end of this video. But we're out here. We're going to have some fun, do a little bit of fishing. A lot of news has happened since we've done our last update. So one major thing that happened is the brain-eating amoeba that I talked about on the river when we went up there and we checked out that hot spring there was a sign there and it talked about the brain-eating amoeba somebody here at Lake Mead got it and unfortunately passed away so that's horrible news we feel for the family um, it's something that just can't be prevented it's it's extremely rare I think he was only the third person in the United States to get it this year and all three of them did pass away so horrible that that happened so something else that's happened since we've been gone is body number six got found out here at lake mead we believe it was over by colville uh, one of the divers that was out there found some skeletal remains deep in the water when he was diving that's what we've heard so far is that the diver found the remains and then they went recovered it and confirmed that it was body number six found here at lake mead so we're going to drive around check water levels talk more about this stuff do a little bit of fishing and uh, check it out and also notice where i'm walking it's beautiful nice and smooth they finished this side of the ramp and it looks like they're building the other side up also which will make this place just beautiful to launch and uh, hopefully a lot faster in the future this thing's gonna be like seriously like eight lanes wide i don't know what they plan on doing out here but it's looking real good as far as the ramp goes well, the water was kind of deep i have a 4x4 truck and the water was like right at my door so i think you're still gonna need 4x4 until they completely finish it you can tell it stays shallow for too far it starts to reach your doors and sometimes hard to launch but uh, i'm out here with the family they all decided to come out this time the weather's beautiful today i love this time of year so it should be a fun day on the water so when the water is shallow that car is pretty much to the doors still having trouble launching yeah that's how it goes i think you still need four by four to come out here man i love this time of year it's just starting to cool off a little bit and feel actually really good out here that sun's a little bit warm but you know we got a nice cool breeze and uh, it's that time of year where we're pushing like sweater weather you know this is by far my favorite time of year right when it starts to turn cold before it gets too cold but we got everybody with us we got old juju right there What's up? Oh. senior <laughs> a lot of you guys were wondering if mrs mountain man actually existed and yeah she does she's right there so you get a glimpse of her we really don't show family they're not really involved with it too much but every once in a while they'll come out and hang out and uh we just we do our thing there was a big old ball of shad over there it's like the nature channel out here oh yeah the migration has started up for a lot of the waterfowl species in North America, so we're starting to get a lot more duck species and stuff come through here. As it starts to cool down, it's cool because you'll start to see a lot more birds like that. Like the coots. We got way more coots right now than we have the rest of the year. I saw some mallards. Uh, a lot of ducks are starting to migrate through here, so it's cool to see. Well, the first stop is over here where we check our water level. That is intake number one that used to feed vegas water right there as you can see it looks like we got a little bit of change i looked at the graph it said we're still at 1046 foot above sea level so we haven't changed a whole lot since last time we came out here if anything we're a little bit stable and mine have raised a little bit so from a couple months ago when we hit where the lake hit the very lowest that it's been we've gone up six feet so all that heavy monsoon season we've gotten this year actually helped a whole lot and it's really good to see the water looks a lot healthier than it has all year long around here 
it's really starting to clear up again. This lake at one point you were able to see extremely deep in a lot of spots and for a while when the water was dropping you couldn't see nearly as far as you used to. We're starting to get some clarity back again. It's kind of dark out here so I can't see our marker down there but it's somewhere down there. Oh yeah you could see it way down there nowadays. It's good to see. We're gonna have to start using that little like chip in, in that line right there. Whatever's happening is working but I have to say that there's less evaporation, less heat, and a lot of things that are causing this water to go up a little bit. We expected it to go up. We'll see next summer. Who knows, it might drop. We just don't know what's gonna happen, but as of right now, it's gone up a couple feet since last time. Yeah, so looking at the graphs, we're at like 73 degrees of water right now. That's what the water temp is. And uh, that's pretty good. You know, for a little while there, where the water was well into the 80s, and uh, you know we were in the dog days of summer when it was super hot and there's gonna be a lot of evaporation and a lot of water needs from the city from all the cities that use this water so now that we're approaching winter we're technically in fall now we're approaching winter and stuff is finally starting to cool off it means that a lot of people don't have to water their lawns as much they don't have to water their plants as much and they, the water demand isn't as high and on top of that the evaporation really isn't a problem anymore so uh, this is good news, you know. We're gonna see what happens throughout this winter. You know, we're, we're talking about a couple foot movement and it's still hard to believe, you know, at one point that this lake was way, way out there. Oh, just hooked my finger. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna throw a couple baits around here. If there's any fish down there, they won't be able to pass up this little brush hog. Yep. And there's that tower. We talk about it all the time because the pipes they put down wouldn't even be able to go in the water if they wanted it to so they pretty much gave up on it it's crazy because the water was all the way to the base of that thing so one reason why we decided to come out here today and do this little bit of a update also is because of the fact another body got found out here at lake mead to be honest there hasn't been much news coverage over it i think people aren't really surprised that another body turned up there would honestly probably be more bodies turned up if the water level continued to drop because you know when it was dropping really fast they were turning up like crazy. All over this beach behind us right here, the diver over in Colville Bay found some bones and they went back with a whole team the next day. And sure enough, they found the remains of another human. So it's likely the sixth body to turn up here at Lake Mead. And I just haven't personally heard a lot of news coverage of her. Last week also, a person caught the brain eating amoeba. During the summer, when the water's warm, we get a lot of stagnant warm water around here and it's definitely something you've got to watch out for. So that brain eating amoeba is no joke. Extremely rare. This person was the third to pass away in the United States from this thing. So that, year, that's right? how rare it is. Yeah, this year. So that's how rare it is. And I was reading up on it. Only like 160 something people have died since the 60s when they started tracking this thing. And oh, I just had a little bite. It's extremely crazy because not only do you have to be in water temperatures that are around 80 degrees, which is a really hot water temperature the water has to be stagnant but you also have to inhale some water within your nose and it goes into your your nostrils it goes up in your brain cavity you start feeling sick and this person that recently got it i guess when they felt the sim symptoms come it eventually took their life within a week so this is something that is no joke i think i think if you catch it there's no cure and you die within a couple days right yeah there's no cure it attacks you really fast and really hard out of all the people that have ever caught it four people have survived it and they still don't know why those people survived it you have more chance of getting struck by lightning but it is out here and it's usually 16 years old or younger that get it because you know they're mixing up the dirt they're in there they're swimming the around, shallow water shallow water so yeah it, it's just one of those things extremely unfortunate if you catch that thing so prayers to his family yeah that's one reason why during the summer you got to watch out where you're swimming because not only is there that but in that warm stagnant water you can get swimmers itch which is from duck feces that sits in that water the bacteria grows on it and when you swim in that stagnant warm water you'll get real itchy so if you're going to come out to a lake like this or any lake across the country and the water's warm and stagnant i recommend just watching out if you're going to swim in there you know our lake like all out here that we're at right now none of this water stagnant and it all stays a little bit colder you don't got to watch out for anything really 
anytime you're in a really warm body of water and the water just doesn't move at all, doesn't have any sort of current, doesn't have anything going on, just uh, be careful. One last thing. The kid that actually passed away from this thing, I believe he was 18 years old, he caught it on the Arizona side. What's the name of that place over there? It's um, Kingman Wash. Kingman Wash. He caught it over there by Kingman Wash. We filmed over there a little bit. It's over there like going towards the dam, which is very surprising because usually the water flows through there because it's running to the dam, but Kingman Wash is like off to the side and there is some stagnant water there, which I've never heard of anybody catching it at Lake Mead. I think I heard of one a couple years back in Government Wash. Oh yeah? A lot of stagnant water down there. I think two, three years ago, somebody caught some down there. Man, it's packed out here today, isn't it? Yeah, there's a lot of people out today. Tourism starting it's to go up weather. a little bit, yeah. Well, look at the legendary boat right there. I think it is officially touching water again at its base. Last time you saw it, Drew, it was way out, huh? Yeah, the land came up to about where we're at right now. Yeah, this whole valley right here is all full again. It's looking good. Let's go check it out. Wow, yeah, the water is to the boat. Look at this. It's well into the water now. It's just me or does the boat look like it's tilting more right now? It is. I think so too. I was talking about that last time. Is I think the boat's at more of an angle. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if it falls over soon. Because you know, when that soil got dry and then it's getting wet again and it just keeps fluctuating, the weight of that boat is just kind of pulling down on it slowly. But the little mini jungle out here that's growing in this valley, changing every single time we come out here. These trees man they're growing fast look how tall those things are now and of course like i was telling you guys my worst nightmare has been confirmed twice now these things are starting to get dry now when they start falling off and you want to walk through this little spot right here these guys right here will just cling on to everything you've got you'll get about a million of them on your pants on your shoes everything do they look like a good time Jew? <laughs> heck no Think if I throw one, it'll stick on you. Try it. Throw it. <laughs> oh, it did. <laughs> Dang. Yeah, see, they'll stick on you easy. The trunk sticks. Oh, yep. Yeah. That easy. Don't even gotta throw it. <laughs> These things are a pain. If you ever get them all in your socks or anything, it's the worst. And this whole little basin's full of them. And so here's the Las Vegas wash that we're always filming. And every single time we come out here, it looks like a completely different landscape. But it'd be crazy to see the water go back to where at one point, I think it was in 2020, we took our boat way back in the Vegas wash. It was like a big river that went back in there. We took our boat way back there, but it's just cool to look at ever-changing scenery around here. Oh, what'd you just catch here? <laughs> oh. oh, man. That's a good size bait. Yeah, those are real nice. Look at that big one. All the time, I always talk about how big gizzard shad could get. Look at that. He just caught an adult gizzard shad right there. That's some good sized bait right there. Look at that gizzard shad. Mm -mm. So we always talk about how big gizzard shad could get. Look at that. We have no need for this guy. So that was a full grown gizzard shad right there. Probably a couple pounder. They'll get a little bit bigger than that. One just jumped right there too. <laughs> he found a little honey hole here though. Did you get even more? Man, it's like every throw. Yeah, the shad, they're, they're going to spawn or they're spawning already. Those are some good size right there. We'll go throw those in deep water and see if we can hook up on something. All right, so we caught a bunch of big gizzard shad, like perfect size bait. What we do to hook them up, you grab one of them. Nice and lively little shad. Where's the hook at? You get the shad right there and you put it right in front of their eyeball and their nostril go straight across. That's how we like to do it. They're gonna stay alive. This is on a Carolina rig right there. Probably a foot and a half liter to a little shad. So we're just letting that bounce on the bottom and troll behind our boat as we go slowly. Sure enough, it works. If you're out here and you happen to catch shad at Lake Mead, that's by far one of the best ways to do it if they're on bottom. And if they're not, you just get a hook, do the exact same hook right in front of the, right in the nose and just let them free spool. No without way. a without a weight back there so those are by far the best ways to fish around here with live bait fish on we still don't have a net you're saying no we don't dang have a net. it <laughs> that's 15 pound test though so you should be able to lift them up i'll go ahead and flip them 
Oh, a healthy guy, huh? Oh, that's a healthy one. Dang, that's a healthy one. They had them hooked. Yep, that's how you want it. I was letting line on, so I didn't want to get a knot or whatever. It's not a bad one. Yeah. He gets to live another day. I haven't seen Lake Mead one that nice in a while. Yeah, that was a healthy one. We'll throw you on another bait, see if you can catch another one real quick. Man, they're boiling like crazy right now. Look at that. It's hard to believe this time of year there's a full-blown boil. Got him. Juju just caught one. Film him, babe. Monster. Then you both hold the fish. Oh, that's, Ooh, a, that's nice a big one. one. That's a big one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is it not going to break your line? Oh. Dang. We got a double hookup right here. Look there at that. It is. Mine's bigger. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Go back I'm to surprised. There's swim some, another day. Some nice ones today. So on the last video we were out here, Senior was talking about the fall transition and how when it hits lakes, the fishing becomes phenomenal. Now that really just happens when the lake starts to cool off a little bit. It might have already started a little bit because one of the biggest things about like the fall bite when it starts to get really good out here is all the shad start to push really shallow again. And when they're really shallow like that, obviously the stripers follow. So this water cools off, the fish feel good, they start moving shallow and everywhere throughout the whole lake and the bite just gets really good. Um, it'll get even better than this hopefully this year, but it's just, it's great right now. That's one of the things, you know, every lake goes through its seasons. And out here at Lake Mead, this is part of the update, you know, how the fishing's been, I guess. And uh, looks like it's been pretty good. What do you recognize about this spot, Drew? It's, uh, isn't this where we crashed that one time? <laughs> yep. <laughs> this right here is Sin City Island. That's the name Senior gave to it. Yeah, so we crashed on top of this thing a little while ago. You might even be able to still see our prop marks on there, but... The water's actually gone up. It's not as high as it was when we crashed on top of that thing, but it's getting close. Before we close out this video, we're gonna go to one last spot. We know where there's a boat that we haven't really uh, investigated or walked up to. We'll go over there, show you guys a new boat, and uh, go from there, but let's, let's hit it. It's starting to get dark. We have 60 minutes of daylight left, so we gotta hurry. Keep an eye out. There's that boat we were talking about. Let's go take a look at it. It's kind of steep. You don't think storm water's gonna hit? No, you, uh, slow down, slow down, slow down. Back, 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 back. Too late, too late. Perfect landing. Go ahead, yes. you. Here it is, looks like some sort of speed boat. Man, they got an old engine on this thing that grew all kinds of quagga mussels and everything on it. What's weird is this whole boat looks old. Look at you up there. <laughs> A lot of it looks a little bit older, but that battery is kind of like still in good shape to be honest for having been underwater for a lot of years. One of the last times we were out here and we were exploring a little boat and we asked you guys what kind of boat it was, a lot of you guys put in the comments down and DM me on Instagram and everything, you know, the year and the model and that boat was made in the 60s. It was a boat from the 60s. So this thing right here, I don't think it's going to be quite that old. But you could definitely tell it's a little bit older. I don't see any sort of logo on it or anything, but maybe someone's familiar with just the look and the shape of it. This was the edge of the boat right here, and it has these wings that come out to the side a little bit. I don't think I've ever seen that design on a, on a boat nowadays. But this thing's pretty neat. We've known about it for a while and haven't came up and looked at it. And a lot of you guys enjoyed when we walked around that boat last time and kind of looked at it and inside of it and what it was. And I uh, kind of asked you guys to figure out, you know, the year and the model of it. Maybe you guys can do the magic again and figure out what kind of boat this was back in its heyday and, you know, how much it was worth and stuff. But this thing's probably got a crazy story, just like all the other ones. When this thing sank, for this to be water deep enough to sink in, it had to be a long time ago. He might have hit those rocks. He might have caught bad weather. Who knows? But all these got a crazy story to tell. All right, starting to get dark. I'm ready to go grub. You guys ready to go eat? Oh yeah, I'm ready to go cut, get some food. We haven't eaten anything all day, so... Let's get out of here. Yep. I know you're hungry. <laughs> she said it a little while ago. Starving. <laughs> Juju. 
I'm always hungry. Yeah, Juju's always hungry. He's like six one already. He just that's all he does is eat. That's all he does. Okay. Eat. You know, one of the craziest things about Lake Mead, we spend a lot of time out here, and we've been out here for a long time. I always forget about it. And a lot of people talk about it all the time. One of the one of the leading reasons that this is a massive tourist attraction is just the scenery. If you look at these mountains, we've got all kinds of different colors and stuff. There's the narrows. And the Colorado River used to go from down there and flow through this big flat section right here. This was a big open area from steep canyons to steep canyons to an open area. And a lot of Native Americans used to live out here and use areas like this that were a little bit more open that they can access that water from. So the river used to go through there, come around this little flat section, and then it used to go back in there where the Hoover Dam is back to steep canyons. So this whole area right here used to be like a big flat open area that you know a lot of wildlife and Native Americans and stuff used to use. And that body that was found just recently by a scuba diver. The police already did a report on it. They just think somebody happened to drown back in there, you know, way back in the day. And uh, they just happened to stumble across the bones now. But that was way over there by Colville Bay. But if we find out any information on that body, uh, we'll go ahead and update you guys on our next update, you know, who it might have been or, you know, something along those lines. But I hope you guys enjoyed this update. You know, a little bit happened here, not a whole, whole lot because the weather has been starting to get a little bit better. But I really do hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys happen to stumble across anything interesting about the lake or any areas surrounding us, whether it be a really cool ghost town idea, uh, something interesting with any lakes around us, or just something that you think would make an interesting video, go ahead and drop it down in the comments down below. Maybe shoot us a DM on Instagram. Both of us check them. We try our best to keep up with the DMs we're receiving. But uh, let us know what you're interested in, what you want to see. But I really do thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you outdoors.